So no matter who we are, we will have those times where we're going to be defended by a good defender, by somebody who we feel like is kind of locking us up. And the best offensive players are able to still score on those good defenders and do it in a way that's super composed, calm, collected. Because at the end of the day, if you want to keep moving up the level of your offensive play, your scoring ability, you're probably going to be defended by better defenders, right? Just how it works. So in this video, I'm going to give you guys a full breakdown on how to score on good defense, how to have those good D better O moments that we see from the best scores, the most elite players at any level. So without further further ado, let's get into it. So number one is being able to use composed contact, right? And I say composed because I'm not talking about just flailing or throwing yourself at that defender. I'm talking about using this strategically, being controlled with that contact. So the thing is, most times when you're being defended by a good player, there's going to be a little bit of contact going on. Maybe you try to drive by them and they take that contact to the chest and you feel like you just can't get by them. It's a brick wall. So the players who are able to score on good defenders are able to use this contact to their advantage. They're able to get into that defender and then bounce out using that contact to separate. They're able to take a tight angle, right? Get that shoulder by that hip, maybe give a little bump on the way to the basket and use the idea of initiating contact to their advantage without doing it in a way that gets them out of control. So I guess the easiest way to think about this, and I talk about this all the time in plenty of other videos, is just being the one to initiate that contact. If you win the contact battle, chances are it's gonna be a lot easier to score. And this includes the off arm as well. If you're playing against a good defender, most times they'll have a hand in there, right? They're gonna be trying to reach for the ball. Maybe they'll have a hand on you like a little arm bar. So welcome that in and then use that hand back. Use that off arm to your advantage. Swipe that hand away. Maybe get a little leverage and send them backwards as you drive by them. Basketball at the end of the day is a contact sport. And I know I'm gonna get some hate saying it's a foul, whatever. But if you look at the best players, again, at any level, they're using that off arm to their advantage. So make sure that you're doing this as well. Number two is not getting sped up. Whenever we play against good defense, we have a tendency to speed up a little bit, right? To just try to use that raw force and athleticism and speed to just drive by a defender as fast as we can because we feel like if we can beat them with our speed, if we go faster than them, then we're going to be able to score on them or we're going to be able to get out of that situation. In reality, that's going to be tough to do. Even if you do beat them, you're going to be out of control going into that help defense or going into that finish, going into that shot. So instead of just trying to go harder to get out of these situations, you actually want to be more composed, right? And use that speed or slower speed to your advantage. We not only see this with the Luka Doncic of the world, but also plenty of other players who, when they're getting pressured, they're able to slow down, keep that composure, change speeds a little bit, but also not get sped up. And that leads me into number three, which is to switch up the timing a bit. And this can be applied to a ton of different concepts. Taking that last example, we can apply it to our speed, right? Maybe we're going fast. We feel like we're getting locked up a little bit. So we slow back down. That kind of throws off their mental timing or that mental clock for that defender. And then we speed back up from there or get into a shot, whatever. This could be the timing of the dribble. Let's say we take a couple dribbles. We can't really get by them. So instead of keeping that same rhythm, we switch up that timing and go from there. This could be switching up the timing of your footwork. So maybe rather than getting into your typical one, two, you slow it down a little bit to throw off the timing of the contest. Or maybe you go a little bit faster and go with an outside inside, which they're not expecting. Again, they're trying to time it up. And when you throw off that timing, it's going to be tough for them to defend. Or even at the basket, you use one of what I call a quicksand finish. So you're going full speed towards that rim. And then you kind of slow down, switch up the timing and finish from there as you let them pass by. So again, this goes back to maintaining your composure, trying to be unpredictable rather than just trying to blow by them at full force. Next one here is going to be freeing up space to operate. So a lot of the time, especially when we have our space kind of suffocated by a defender, they're really up playing aggressive, uptight defense. All we need to do is separate backwards or to the side, just create some form of space so that we can attack from there. Plus, a lot of the time when we do this, now they're going to be chasing us, right? Most times they're a little bit overzealous. So if you imagine yourself going backwards and they're chasing you from there, they're coming out towards you, now you can win this momentum battle. They're coming away from the basket when your goal is to go towards the basket. Majority of the time, we know who's gonna win that battle, but this takes being able to separate out Maybe you get a little bit of contact first as you kind of bounce out, but it's just giving you options. It's giving you some space to work with. It's allowing you to kind of refine this composure and then reevaluate and attack from there. Next one is just keep it simple. A lot of the time, just like you try to speed it up a little bit too much, we try to overcomplicate a little bit too much. We think that doing a bunch of moves is gonna help us out. When in reality, most times when you see offensive players use a bunch of moves and hit a bunch of combos, 
that's usually either not on good defense or when they're really, really, really in a flow state and they don't have that feeling that they're getting locked up. I'd argue that most times when we succeed on good defense, it's from keeping it simple, making maybe one quick move, getting into a simple shot, using these other techniques, rather than just trying to dribble our way out of that. Now, of course, there's always gonna be exceptions to this, but I would strongly suggest just trying to keep it simple, trying to take the easiest option, maybe a shot, maybe a simple drive, maybe a pass like we'll talk about later. And this allows you to kind of build your momentum because you're not doing a bunch of different things and getting no results from it. You're just making a simple, easy play, getting a quick win. Next one, and maybe the most important one, is just being comfortable adjusting. When you're playing against good defense, when you have a strong contest on you when you're at the rim with a big defender who's a great shot blocker you're gonna have to adjust right these aren't gonna be these clean cut plays that we do a lot of time in a workout where it's perfect technique you're gonna have to fade a little bit you're gonna have to adjust your timing a little bit you're gonna have to take some contact these aren't gonna be always perfect plays so we have to get comfortable with that imperfection and a lot of this is decided from how we train if we only train perfection if we never train to fade and to be a little bit off balance and to adjust, chances are when we get into a game and we're playing against good defense, we're not gonna be able to do this in this environment either. So be comfortable with the uncomfortable, train to adjust a little bit. Another interesting point I wanna make is that when you're being defended very well, usually the mid range is where you're gonna find a lot of success. Usually this is gonna be an option for more manageable, less forced shot. So just imagine yourself being defended by a really good defender. It's gonna to be tough for you to get to the rim. Again, even if you make something happen, they're gonna recover, you're gonna be a little bit out of control. You can make it work, but it's probably gonna to be tough. Three pointers, you'll probably be able to get off a little bit easier because they're not gonna be defending you as closely for the most part. But these are gonna to be tougher because they're threes, they're further shots, more can go wrong. So if you're able to get into that mid-range area, you don't necessarily need to get all the way to the rim. You can stop short, you can shoot a little short jumper, or a little post fadeaway. You can come to two feet, get yourself in control, and then work out of there. So this is kind of the middle ground between shooting kind of a crazy three, getting to the rim for a little bit of an out of control finish. And most defenders don't really expect this as much anyways. They're either defending you for a full drive or to stop that three point shot and to get a great contest on that. Plus in the mid range, typically we can elevate a little bit more. For example, when I'm shooting a three, since it's a further shot, I need more power on it. I'm probably gonna have to shoot that with a little bit lower of a release point versus when we're in the mid range, we can raise that release point a little bit because we don't need as much power, which means we can shoot over defenders a little bit more and have it still be a manageable shot. And then the last two things I would suggest are just to maintain your composure mentally and then to just pass if you need to. So in terms of maintaining your composure, it's not just being able to stay composed physically, right, and play at a little bit slower speeds, but it's being able to turn the ball over to get blocked or whatever and still attack that next play with the same level of focus and intent and positivity. And part of this includes the second one, which is passing. If they're face guarding us the whole game, if they're playing really good defense and we just make the right passes, sometimes when we're really getting locked up, it's okay to accept that, make that smart play, and then allow the game to come to us. Maybe that defender gets tired. Maybe they just give up a little bit on playing full out defense. So the opportunities will come to you, but don't be afraid to pass the ball sometimes. So as always, hopefully this helped you guys out a little bit at least. I appreciate you guys so much for tuning in and always playing a part of the journey. Make sure to stay tuned with everything that we're doing, not only the content, but we're traveling around to over 25 countries this year for camp. We have our virtual academy going as well, where you're gonna have the best, most comprehensive training programs online. We got our summer academy in Miami our nonprofit. So we got a lot of cool stuff going on. I'll link all of that in the description and in the comments. And hopefully we can help you guys continue to reach that ceiling as a basketball player. Until next time.